learners welcome to the yet another session of environmental and occupational hazards that is occupational health hazards in construction industries we know that construction industry is one of the stable growing industries of the world and also the labor construction labor from 7.5% of the world labor force in india particularly it is the largest economic activity after agriculture and since it is a labor intensive industry that consists of 44% of all urban unorganized workers this workforce that normally constitute 55% of unskilled laborers and 27% of the skilled laborers and rest are the technical and supportive staff the two broad categories of construction workers are the building and the civil engineering building that applies to works that involves the structures like uh, houses offices shops factories and schools civil engineering that applies to all other built structures in our environments like roads tunnels canals and dams railways and docks construction workers in both categories are at a greater risk of developing certain health disorders and uh, sickness than workers in many other industries so they are exposed to multiple physical chemical and also biological agents that make them vulnerable to various health problems like uh, injuries respiratory problems dermatitis musculoskeletal disorders and also gastrointestinal diseases the work is very hard that is a lot of physical labor is involved and frequently under difficult conditions like adverse weather conditions and the nature of work hours of work and low pay and uh, poor living conditions with a lack of basic amenities and uh, separation from the family and uh, lack of job security and lack of access to the occupational health services make the situations very very worse so due to the ergonomic issues they are also vulnerable to degenerative disorders apart from these in most of the construction projects the workers those who are employed are unorganized in nature and also frequently not guided by the legislations made for the health and welfare of the workers and they are not eligible for the free or subsidized care learner first we have to see that what type of hazards normally they will face first we will look into the physical hazards so in these physical hazards we can also verify or whether we have to learn also that is a noise as a physical hazard heat vibration and radiation are the most important physical hazards they will come across for example if we will see the noise hazards in construction plants or the construction sites the compressors and the concrete breakers they are frequently create very loud noise so high noise levels that can distract the concentration and difficulties in speech communication and also increase the risk of the accidents because they will deviate from the the focus so the sources of noise like uh, engines of vehicles are air compressors and cranes and also some types of winches and uh, rivet guns and nail guns or paint guns and pneumatic hammers normally these are and also associated with this power saws and uh, sanders routers planers explosives and also so many other equipment they will use in this site so noise is present on demolition of the projects by the very activity of the demolition so regular exposure to high noise levels that can also leads to the uh, tinnitus and also tinnitus and also the hearing loss uh, even though it may take many years for the symptoms to become apparent so handheld power tools which are regularly used in this construction site and the vibration of these tools normally can cause the hand arm vibration syndrome because due to the vibration of drilling machine and also hammering and also for the cutting of the materials like this this type of vibration hazard will takes place so it may affect the fingers hands and arms and can also cause the permanent damage over time so the more a worker is exposed to the vibration the more likely to be the problems will occur so as an employer 
the law states that you need to assess and control any risk from the vibration and sometimes if it is possible try to select the tools that are exposing low vibration while working and the risk which is associated is assessed and then controlled in between where the noise has already been reduced by other controls but an acceptable levels that has not still been reached that is a hearing protection should be provided and then uh, earth moving equipment and vibrating work surface and other large mobile machines they are subjected to the workers to the segmental and, uh, and then entire body vibration and also hand held power tools like uh, uh, pneumatic hammers are there, drills, they are also regularly used in the construction and the vibration can cause the hand arm vibration syndrome. So these uh, conditions also affect the fingers and the movement of hands, movement of the arms and the tightening of the shoulders and also uh, can cause the permanent damage. So wherever there is a possibility there have to be some engineering modification in terms of the using, using of the uh, dampeners uh, and, and also some other engineering controls have to be taken care of. And heat and also uh, cold hazards, they also arises primarily because of the large portion of the construction work is uh, uh, conducted while exposed to the extreme weather conditions and roofers are also exposed to the sun and uh, frequently with no protection sometimes receiving both heavy radiant and uh, convective heat loads in addition to the metabolic heat from physical labor. So the principal source of non-ionizing ultraviolet radiation are the sun and also uh, electric arc which is used in welding. So exposure to this ionizing radiation is less common but also occur with x-ray inspection of welds or otherwise it may occur with the instruments like uh, flow meters uh, and also that, that are normally used in the radioactive isotopes. So those who are working under the water are in pressurized tunnels uh, uh, and also some divers they are exposed to high barometric pressures. So those workers are at high risk for the developing a variety of conditions uh, which are associated with the high pressure like uh, uh, decompression sickness and also inert ga gas narcosis and uh, aseptic bone necrosis and also some other disorders. Now we will look into the chemical hazards. So the way in which chemicals affect human body is depends upon its form. We have already learnt about this one. So they will enter into the body by inhalation or breathing in or sometimes it may be an ingestion or by swallowing method or absorption through the skin. So wherever the inhalation or breathing is the most important route of entry of these chemicals into the body. So some toxic gases and vapors they are also present in construction site that can cause irritation in the nose and also throat by giving a warning of their presence. So we have to understand that lot of uh, toxic chemicals are there. So sometimes uh, they do not have the uh, penetrate deep into the lungs or bloodstream. So there is a possibility of ingestion or the swallowing uh, the chemicals like uh, lead based paints. Uh, they have to be handled and the handler uh, com sometimes uh, uh, something or the smokes without first washing um, the employees uh, hands. So toxic vapors that contaminate utensils which are used for the drinking or eating are sometimes when metals are eaten on site. So toxic fumes from the welding and uh, soldering procedures and also electrical shock that can cause bodily injury, illness, sometimes death may occur. So because of the no oxygen particularly in the confined spaces. So chemical hazards are often airborne in nature and also they can appear as dust, fumes, mist, vapors or sometimes it may be a gas. So the exposure usually occurs by the inhalation uh, or otherwise some airborne hazards they may settle on and also be absorbed through the um, intact skin. So chemical hazards also occur in liquids or uh, semi-liquid state, solvents, cleansing agents or uh, as powders. 
so they may also be ingested with food or water sometimes it might be uh, inhaled by smoking so we never know in what way it will enter into our in our body so there are several illness that have been linked to the construction uh, uh, site and construction workers like the silicosis and uh, and also the uh, sand blasters tunnel builders and also uh, rock drill operators so asbestosis is uh, the insulating uh, asbestosis among asbestos insulation workers and uh, steam pipe filters that uh, building demolition workers and also some other disease like bronchitis among the welders and uh, skin allergies among the uh, masons and others those who are working with the cement and uh, some diseases like uh, uh, neurological disorders normally we will observe in painters and others those who are exposed to organic solvents especially lead and also death rate from the cancer of the lungs and also respiratory infections have been found among uh, uh, asbestos insulation workers roofers welders and also some woodworkers and uh, normally lead poisoning that also normally frequently we will observe in this type of uh, workers that will occur among the bridge workers especially and then painters so some people have the uh, some health outcomes are also there like uh, uh, dermatitis it is an infl inflammatory skin condition that is caused by the exposure to the hazardous substances like uh, wet cement as well as the solvents the uh, normally they are uh, toxic in nature so this can be either by the irritant dermatitis which is usually caused by the skin coming in contact with the substance or uh, allergic contact uh, dermatitis where a person develops an allergic reaction to a substances or the chemical uh, which is a uh, toxic in nature and also sometimes we will observe that prolonged exposure to the asbestos asbestosis that leads to the asbestosis and also pleural plaque and lung cancer and also sometimes it is a, a mesothelioma and also the dangers that arises with the asbestos fibers uh, that become uh, airborne in nature and also remain suspended in the air so breathing in these fibers definitely can uh, cause the damage to the lungs and also finally ultimately it leads to the uh, lung cancer so in addition to this one respirable crystalline silica rcs is also formed when construction materials which contains the silica like uh, bricks or the concrete and the granite or uh, tiles they will cut or drilled or crushed or the sometimes it is an abraded so these procedures will definitely uh, eliminate or uh, the um, crystalline silica will enter into the uh, air so respirable uh, these compounds silica compounds uh, crystalline silica compounds can be breathed in and may reach the deep lungs where it can uh, scar the delicate tissue of the lung so difficulty in breathing definitely the first symptom normally we will observe with this one and long term exposure to the respirable uh, crystalline silica uh, may cause the increase in the risk of the lung cancer so another material is the cadmium so about uh, almost 70000 employees in the construction industry have been exposed to cadmium so that is normally used as a rust preventive coating on steel and also it is an alloying element so the acute exposure of the cadmium that can produce severe lung irritation or otherwise it is a pulmonary edema and sometimes there is a, a chance of death so long term exposure that will be resulted in the uh, emphysema and also can uh, damage the kidneys and next is the zinc metal it is used in the manufacture of brass and uh, galvanized metals and also various other alloys so in the process of welding or cutting zinc coated metals there is a possibility of inhalation of fumes and some particles definitely it will enter into our body that can cause the metal fume fever and uh, some oxides like uh, iron oxide is the significant and also important alloying element in the steel manufacturing so the construction workers are uh, frequently exposed to iron oxide which is a uh, highly toxic in nature that uh, released from both the base metal and also electrode during the welding process so the primary acute effect of this type of exposure is the irritation of the nasal passages throat and also lungs another important toxic uh, compound is the uh, mercury so compounds used to coat metals to prevent rust 
or we can say that to inhibit the foliage growth that is especially in the marine paints. So the mercury vapors which produced under the intense heat of the arc are the gas flame. So the exposure of these mercury fumes that produce stomach pain immediately, diarrhea, kidney damage or respiratory failures and also long term exposure they will produce the tremors and uh, emotional instability and also hearing damage. And next we will move on to the another important uh, um, uh, lead oxide that is a uh, lead oxide fumes normally generate in the process of welding and also cutting of the uh, lead bearing alloys or metals those uh, surfaces have been painted with a lead based paint. So definitely lead is adversely affects the human brain uh, and also CNS that is the central nervous system, circulatory system, reproductive system, kidneys and also muscles. So the inhalation or otherwise ingestion that can cause the lead poisoning and some uh, fluorides are also there. There are various types of uh, fluxes used in the welding which are coated with the fluoride compounds. So construction workers frequently exposed to these fluxes that may irritate the eyes, nose and also throat. So the repeated exposure in air over a long period that may cause the pulmonary edema that means a fluid which is uh, present in the lungs and also the uh, there is a bone damage also occurs. And some other compounds like chlorinated hydrocarbon which are used as a solvents and uh, hydrocarbons uh, and also used in the degreasing. Uh, process or otherwise uh, uh, cleaning operations in the construction activities. So in welding especially in the cutting operations the heat and the UV radiation from an arc that may decompose the vapors and also form the highly toxic and irritating uh, phosgene gas. So diseases that are resulted from the chemical hazards started from the smoke, fog, vapor and then odor. They are communicated by the air. So chemicals affect human body through inhaling or uh, dermal contact especially in the case of uh, organic solvents and then uh, pesticides. So a large number of uh, uh, liquid chemicals like glue or gum adhesives, uh, asphalt, tar and cement, uh, powdered cement we can say that they are largely used in the construction sites. They are very dangerous to the workers. Um, they may cause the uh, diseases uh, like uh, silicosis. We have already seen that it is a disease uh, that is uh, caused by the inhaling tiny bits of silica uh, and contact whenever it contact in the uh, respiratory tract. And it is also a lot of workers who blend sand and also use rock uh, drilling machines and uh, dig a tunnel they will uh, come across this type of uh, disease and asbestos is also another type of uh, disease so it is by uh, caused by the inhaling asbestos fibers so frequently it is uh, normally occurred uh, among the workers those who are working with the asbestos and uh, another disease is known as the bronchitis so it is very common among the welders and skin allergies are also common in the workers those who are working with the uh, uh, cement that is uh, normally they will uh, call it as a masons and uh, neurological uh, dis disorders that is a nervous disorders. Uh, it is also normally appear in the workers and painters those who are working with the organic solvents as well as the lead based paints. And uh, most important disease is the lung cancer. So mostly it is observed among the workers, those who are working with the asbestosis and particularly for the roofing and the workers with the wooden work and the welders uh, and uh, lead poisoning is also uh, common in the bridge repair workers as well as the painters, uh, learner. So first we have to check that what are the preventive or the mitigation measures of the chemical hazards. There are there is a lot of research studies have been conducted and then they are suggesting that both psychological and social factors are important in determining the way people perceive and also respond to the risks. So the perceptions and understandings of this type of risks which are important and also influence on the conceptualization of the risk control strategies and especially the risk management it is a three stage process. In the first stage hazard identification and in the second stage that is a hazard assessment 
and in the third stage that is appropriate controls for the risks are selected according to the risk control hierarchy. So for reducing construction site related chemical hazards it is highly important to control the exposure to the chemicals and also the toxic substances. So there is a hierarchy of controls which are used as a means of uh, determining how to implement uh, feasible as well as effective controls. And next we will see the biological hazards. So we know that the biological hazards normally includes the bacteria, viruses, uh, fungi or otherwise normally we can call it as uh, the mold and also the other microorganisms which are associated with the toxins. So they have the ability to have the um, adverse effect on the human health in a different ways. Um, maybe it is a very mild allergic reactions, uh, sometimes it is a very serious medical conditions, uh, sometimes it leads to death also. So these organisms are widespread in the natural environment. They, will, uh, they, they are found in air, water, soil, plant and animals everywhere because of many microbes they will reproduce very rapidly so they require minimal resources for the survival so that is why they are very uh, potent potential danger uh, and also they have a wide variety of occupational settings they are present and exposure to this type of uh, biological hazards uh, normally they will uh, occur during the demolition uh, procedure or sometimes it is a renovation procedure uh, especially the sewing work is there and or uh, otherwise some uh, air handling systems and other construction work uh, from the contact with the contaminated or disease carrying material like uh, soil, water and insects especially the mosquitoes or ticks, bird or uh, bat droppings. Uh, and also animals. So in the construction industry biological health hazards are most commonly found in uh, working in the healthcare facilities uh, like an accumulation of animal waste and also in the presence of rodents, insects and birds uh, and also sometimes it is a demolition of a, a remodeling of old construction sites, uh, buildings because there is a, a like very um, likely the presence of mold or during the clearance operations and the removal of the plants, trees and other foliage landscaping. Uh, fungi is also there and it is also found everywhere both indoors and outdoors and uh, throughout the year and uh, the terms of the fungi and mold are normally they will used interchangeably that means we can also sometimes use the fungi and sometimes we will use mold and uh, mold is actually a type of fungi. So there are many thousands of species of molds are there present in the all over the uh, world and also found in indoors um, that is comes from the outdoor sources only. So they will grow and become a problem only when there is a water uh, damage or water leakage and high humidity or dampness is there. So molds are normally organized into um, three groups uh, according to the human responses. So they are allergic in nature, there is a pathogenic and uh, toxinogenic and uh, allergenic molds. Um, so allergenic, pathogenic and toxinogenic. If you will consider the allergenic uh, molds, they are usually produce life threatening health effects and are most likely to affect uh, um, uh, those who are already allergic for the um, allergic in nature. And sometimes if suppose those who are uh, having this uh, asthma disease, they will also get affected very easily. The human system responses to the allergenic molds they have to uh, they have a tendency to uh, be very relatively mild depending upon the individual sensitivities uh, especially for the producing the scratchy throats or eye and uh, nose irritations and uh, rashes if you will see the pathogenic molds they will usually produce some type of infection so they can cause serious health effects also in persons those who are uh, um, uh, having the suppressed uh, immune systems so healthy people can usually resist infection by these uh, type of uh, uh, molds um, and uh, whatever it is the dose. So every time they will uh, expose to these uh, uh, compounds or this, uh, um, uh, uh, this fungi or the molds regardless of the dose. In some cases high exposure can cause the hypersensitivity uh, pneumonotitis. It is an acute response to the exposure to an organism. So under toxinogenic molds, they are the, some mycotoxins are there, they can cause a serious uh, health effects in almost uh, everyone. 
So these agents have toxic effects uh, from the short term irritation to the immuno uh, suppression and uh, sometimes it may cause the cancer also. So therefore when uh, toxinogenic moles are found uh, further evaluation is highly recommended. So moles affect on the body also and also they will produce and release millions of spores uh, the small enough to be the um, airborne. So they can also produce toxic uh, agents we can say that uh, and also uh, like uh, mycotoxins. Spores and mycotoxins have the negative effect on the human health. So the most common route of the entry into the body is through the inhalation. So mold has a characteristic smell and also if we can smell mold we can also inhale the mold by smelling itself. And uh, learner we have to check the other hazards like uh, psychological hazards those who are working with this one. Uh, especially there is a wide range of work which are characteristic are the work stresses potentially causing stress among the construction workers. So psychosocial uh, issues have been linked to these specific uh, detrimental outcomes um, that are related to the performance, productivity and uh, health or otherwise uh, psychosocial life. A uh, typical example I would like to give that by hiring uh, a credible uh, subcontractors at a short notice and uh, discontinuing the employment of existing staff due to the shortage of work uh, adds to the frustration. So another important uh, hazard is the ergonomic hazard. Strains and sprains are the most common injuries among the construction workers. And chronically disabling mus musculoskeletal disorders that can occur because of the traumatic injury and repetitive forceful movements and awkward postures are the overexertion. And sometimes falls will happen due to the unstable footing or uh, unguarded holes and slips of uh, scaffoldings and ladders are very common um, in construction industry. And also the regularly lifting heavy loads and uh, carrying or handling materials and items as well as the repetitive work like uh, plastering and also they will uh, definitely add on to the uh, musculoskeletal disorders. So these many disorders as well as hazardous um, um, they are uh, the construction workers are every day they are uh, facing. So what are the efforts especially in Indian government they made for these construction workers. So there is a National Safety Council of India is a self-government body and also non-profit and non-governmental organization. It was established under the Societies Act in Mumbai. So every year on March 4th in India celebrated as a National Safety Council of India. So the National Safety Day or week it is a uh, movement that is carried out on an annual basis in order to intercept and minimize the risk as well as the dropping of life of workers during the industrial accidents like a financial loss by availing safety, health and uh, environmental related issue. So the safety day is being celebrated with the great immense interest and also focus to make awareness for the workers about the um, get down the industrial accidents by conducting widespread uh, safety awareness programs. So during this day or week various activities will be conducted to the public uh, as per the safety requirement. In the construction industries uh, for example in the big construction organizations are taking modern techniques uh, like set up in, uh, setting up a safety organization, safety policy, safety check list like that in order to build up their construction fields as an accident free hours. So I would like to conclude over here learner. The construction workers are exposed to multiple risks at working and living uh, places. They are exposed to physical, chemical, biological, ergonomic hazards and environmental and sometimes it is a psychosocial risk. In most places the workers were uh, residing uh, in makeshift camps inside the project sites that expose them to health risks even after the working hours. So due to the poor environmental conditions at work sites um, uh, that uh, chances of diseases from the poor sanitation and unsafe drinking water were very high. So the sites that are creating breeding grounds for various vectors and also protect unprotected laborers act as potential baits. So in addition to this one immigrants from the disease uh, endemic areas with different immune status and uh, settling at highly vector 
receptive and uh, unprotected project sites uh, and also they will introduce new sites and multi-drug resistant uh, and also chances of getting new infections and they are very very high in nature. With this I would like to conclude and in the next session we will come up with the some other important aspects of the environmental and occupational hazards. Thank you.